story recapped here. Today I'm going to show you an action, adventure, sci-fi film called The Edge of Tomorrow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the not too distant future, aliens, called mimics, have landed on Earth and started an invasion in Europe. With millions of human casualties, the mimics seemed unstoppable until humanity gained the upper hand at Verdun. The victory is attributed to the use of a new robotic armored exoskeleton that ensures even soldiers with minimal training can be turned into super soldiers, citing Vita Vertosky's 100 kills in her first day of battle. Dubbed as the Angel of Verdun, Vita's success made her the face of the army. Vita's brash, stoic, and blunt nature, paired with her mimic kill count, gave her the second nickname, Full Metal Bitch. With hope gained from the success in Verdun, humanity prepares to launch an all-out assault on the mimics with Operation Downfall. Major William Bill Cage is the head and face of the U.S. Army media relations and serves as the main man in recruitment for the war effort. He meets with General Brigham in London to discuss Operation Downfall's impact on the population's perception of the war effort. Brigham is concerned that once the battle is won, a lot of soldiers will die and many will be eyeing him for the blame. Bill suggests a way to depict Brigham's story as the man who saved humanity from the mimics. Brigham clarifies that he doesn't want himself to be highlighted, but the invasion itself, and orders Bill to the front lines with a camera crew. Surprised by his sudden involvement in the war, Bill tries to reason out with the general that his only military experience is with ROTC in college and that he only joined the military when his advertising firm shut down, only serving as head of the military's media relations. Brigham clarifies that this is an order, not a suggestion. Desperate to stay, Bill threatens Brigham that he can easily shift the blame of the war to him. General Brigham is unimpressed and has him arrested. The next morning, Bill wakes up in a recruitment camp. He meets Sergeant Farrell who informs him that he's been branded a deserter and is charged with impersonating an officer. Bill has now been demoted to private and is brought to J Squad. The whole base prepares for the invasion and Bill gets strapped into one of the armor exoskeletons. The invasion force loaded up into aircrafts and they head to France. Before they could land, Bill's aircraft gets hit by a missile and everyone is forced to bail. Bill miraculously survives the crash and advances to the beach. All around him planes crash, bombs explode, and soldiers die. Vita joins the battle and Bill sees her fighting the mimics with broadsword, killing them with relative ease. Vita and Bill lock eyes before Vita gets shot by a mimic, killing her. Bill regroups with Farrell and the remains of J-Squad and prepares for the mimic's charge. They get ambushed and everyone dies. Bill survives and kills the ambushing mimic but an alpha mimic comes up behind him. Bill grabs a mine and kills the alpha but gets covered in its blood, melting his skin, and killing him. Bill wakes up at the recruitment camp again. Dazed and reeling from confusion, he is unsure of what happened. He meets Farrell and is introduced to J-Squad again. Bill is extremely confused as everything is happening just as it did earlier. He gets loaded up into the armor, then the aircraft, and they launch for the invasion. They fly and get hit by a missile again and Bill finds himself on the beach. He stumbles his way across the battlefield before getting killed and waking up in the recruitment camp again. Bill tries to tell Farrell and J-Squad what's happening but nobody believes him. He still ends up in the transport aircraft flying into France. Bill dies several more times but respawns every time he dies. Bill gets better at killing the mimics and Vita notices. She tells Bill to find her when he wakes up. Before she could continue they both die. Bill wakes up and finds Vita, telling her what happened. It turns out that she had the power before him and this only happens if they kill an alpha mimic and get covered in its blood. The pair meet up with Carter, an expert in particle physics advanced microbiology. He explains to Bill that the mimics are less of an army and more like a singular organism. The alpha mimic that Bill killed serves as the alien central nervous system. The brain of the mimics is the Omega and it controls them all. The Omega has the ability to control time and reset day to start the battle anew. This is the reason why the aliens have been so successful. Vita then tells Bill that the win at Verdun was a fake out, fooling humanity into believing there's a chance to win. The Mimics will then use its power to wipe out the majority of humanity's army and continue with a planet-wide invasion. Carter then warns Bill of strange visions of the future and visions of the Omega itself. This happens, he theorizes when the Omega gets close to locating Bill. Vita then trains Bill to fight in the training field. Vita warns Bill that if he gets injured, he should make sure he dies. If he loses a lot of blood and gets a transfusion, he might lose the power to reset time. Bill trains with Vita and dies again, and again, and again until he finally gets a vision of the Omega's location. With his first vision appearing, the pair finish with training and move into battle. Bill and Vita try their best to survive the invasion, 
with Bill trying to memorize everything that's happening and orienting Vita every time they meet again. The pair try their best to cross the beach but the repeats slowly take a toll on Bill as he has to watch Vita get killed a countless number of times. Bill finds himself caring more and more for Vita each time he relives the day. Carter finally finds the Omega in Germany but a frustrated Bill tells him that no matter what they do, they still can't manage to survive the initial beach landing. After several more tries, the pair manage to make it across the beach onto a trailer park. They find a vehicle and drive as far as they can inland. Bill tells Vita that they eventually talk and get to know each other better. Vita is apprehensive but Bill tells her some details about her life that she shared with him but Vita shrugs. They stumble into an old farmhouse and find a small helicopter. Vita wants to fly to Germany but Bill argues they should stay for the night. He makes them coffee but Vita notices that Bill already knows how she likes her coffee. Bill admits that they've lived this before but he doesn't want to go further because he cares for her and she always dies before they could take off in the helicopter. He can't bring himself to kill the Omega as it would make Vita's death permanent. Determined to finish the war, Vita starts the helicopter and the mimics attack and just as Bill had said, she dies. Bill respawns in the camp again but this time decides to journey alone to the Omega. He manages to fly to Germany only to find that the Omega isn't there. He gets ambushed by an Alpha but notices the Alpha isn't trying to kill him. Bill recognizes that it's trying to retrieve its powers. He drowns himself and respawns in the camp, telling Vita and Carter about what he saw. With no other options, the trio decide to try out Carter's prototype transponder which would allow them to see the Omega's true location. They first have to retrieve it from General Brigham at the headquarters. Vita and Bill meet with Brigham at headquarters and Bill somehow appears to have convinced Brigham. He hands them the transponder but as they head out, officers are waiting to arrest them. They try to escape and get into a car chase. Bill manages to use the transponder and sees the Omega is in an underwater chasm under the Louvre. Before Bill could reset the day, they get into a crash. Bill wakes up on a hospital bed seeing a pack of blood getting transfused into him. He realizes that he's lost the power and tries to escape. Vita finds him and he informs her that he's lost his power and this would be their final chance. Bill then tries to get J-Squad on board and the squad joins Bill as soon as they see the full metal bitch with him. The squad launches into France under the cover of darkness. They're immediately met with resistance and their transport crashes. The remaining survivors manage to make it to the Louvre but more of J-Squad die. With only Vita and Bill remaining, they head deeper in. Vita tells Bill that he's a good man and she wishes they had a chance to get to know each other. He kisses him before they split up. Vita tries to make a distraction for the mimics and Bill makes a break for the Omega carrying a pack of grenades. An Alpha finds Vita and kills her. It sees Bill heading for the Omega but Bill manages to dive into the underwater chasm holding the Omega. Bill tries to swim for the Omega, grenades in hand, but the Alpha stabs him through the chest. He drops the grenades and it floats down to the Omega. Luckily, Bill removed the pins and the grenades explode. With the Omega's death, all the mimics cease and die. Bill then wakes up inside a helicopter arriving in London. As he lands, he sees General Brigham making an announcement that a large surge of energy had been detected in France and the Mimics had died. They had succeeded in defeating the Mimics and Bill, being covered in the Omega's blood, had reset the day once more. Bill heads to the training field and meets with the full metal bitch again for the first time. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.